Would you like a better understanding of what the Father's Word truly says to you? What was the Word talking about when it said, in the last days, the Father would bring about His pure language? Come on, ch check it out with me. I've got something for you. Shalom, my friends. In the book of Zephaniah, that's Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9, reads, For then I shall turn unto the peoples a clean lip, so that they all call on the name of Yahweh to serve him with one shoulder. He's saying that uh, in the last days uh, he shall restore his pure language, a clean lip. And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. What, uh, what is the Father saying, you know, uh, referring to a clean lip, a pure language. Three videos back, I, uh, I did a video titled, Having the Mind of Yeshua, and I talked about uh, getting back to the beginning, Kadam, and uh, I mentioned Lashon HaKodesh, Kadam, that's uh, the Father's language, uh, as it was in the very beginning. Uh, a clean lip, a pure language. I talked about uh, water, if you go up to the highest peaks of the mountains, where the water's coming fresh. It's, it's clean, it's pure. As it travels down into the valleys, through the cities, and by the time it gets to where it spills into the ocean, things have been added to it, things have been taken away from it. Um, it's uh, not so pure. In fact, it's uh, unhealthful. So um, the key word there is kadam. So I want to do um, a study on the word kadam and also the word yam. That's uh, in English, Y-A-M. I spell it Y-A-H-M so that you get the idea. It's yam, not yam. <laughs> and um, I always point out when people say uh, uh, yam teruwa uh, or uh, yam kipper. No, it, uh, yam means uh, the sea or seas. It's Yom Teruah and Yom Kippur. Uh, so it's Yom when you're talking about the Moedim, not Yom. Yom uh, is uh, referring to seas and it also refers to the West. This is interesting because uh, in my study on having the mind of Yeshua, again, that's three videos back on my channel, I talked about the East and the West, and um, interestingly enough, we're coming back to that East and West. You know, I pointed out that uh, the word was originally written in Aramaic Hebrew. That includes the First Covenant as well as the Renewed Covenant, sometimes poorly referred to as the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's nothing new. It's the Renewed Covenant and the First Covenant. Uh, every book from Genesis to Revelation was written in Aramaic Hebrew. The Renewed Covenant books, having been written later in time, 
uh, when Greek was the predominant language in the area, they were, were immediately translated from Aramaic Hebrew into Greek, and the Greek uh, traveled west. The Aramaic Hebrew traveled east of Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. And uh, ancient manuscripts were found in an Aramaic village east of uh, Jerusalem. They're older than any Greek uh, manuscripts. But um, this is interesting because uh, the Father's word in his original language traveled east. But um, it was, you know, if you translate it into Greek, English, all the other languages, you're immediately adding to it and taking away from it. His command is not to do that. And that, all that stuff traveled west. This is going to mean a lot more to you than it does right now by the time we get to the end of this video. So um, let's take a look at these words that are found in the original language of the Father as it was originally penned in his books. Uh, the word Kadam, uh, often translated into the English for East, and Yam, the original Aramaic Hebrew word that has most often been translated into uh, West. Kadam. Uh, take a look at this chart and you'll see that uh, the word Kadam is comprised of three Aramaic Hebrew letters here in the original pictograph form as Kof Dalit Mem. Kof, you can see, pretty much looks like what it is, which is sun on the horizon. It has to do with the rising of the sun. Um, Dalit is a door. And Mem, even looks like water, uh, represents water. We are cleansed by the word. Genesis 1.10, Bereshit 1.10. And Elohim called the dry land earth, and the collection of the waters he called seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. Um, we're in the Hallelujah Scriptures, it says the collection of the waters. Other versions, you'll see the gathering together of the waters. The original Aramaic Hebrew there for um, a collection of the waters or gathering together of the waters is the word mikvah. That's the word that's used for immersion, baptized, so that um, the earth, this is the first mention and um, there is a, a rule of thumb when you're studying the word. If there is a particular word that you're interested in, uh, you look for the very first mention of it ever in the word because, as I've said earlier in other videos, the Father reveals the end out of the beginning. And uh, the first four chapters of Bereshith, Genesis, everything in the Word is revealed in those first four chapters. So when you want to get a clearer understanding of a particular word, look for the first mention of it. Well, here is in Bereshith, Genesis, chapter 1, uh, verse 10, the very first mention of mikvah, which would be, you know, baptism more accurately, immersion. And here what we see in uh, 110 is the earth coming up out of the waters. Everything was baptized. Everything was immersed and cleansed, made clean. And you know, everything you and I see, this camera I'm looking at in front of me, your computer in front of you, uh, 
uh, your phone, the shoes you're wearing, the clothes you're wearing, my eyeglasses, everything we see came or comes out of the earth which was made clean in the very beginning. It's man who uh, made it dirty. But um, anyway, um, I digressed a little bit. I just thought that was an important point. Um, Kadam is Kof Dalit Mem. And um, you look at the two letters on the outside, you see the sun rising, the light coming up, bursting forth out of the darkness. And uh, uh, Mem, the water, uh, the cleansing of the word. And what's the heart here is the door, that's Yeshua. Um, Yeshua is the light of the world. So when we see this word Kadam uh, in the word, it's, it's pointing at the Father's ways, back to the very beginning, the origin of the Father's ways and his meanings and his truth. And it points at the east. Why the east? Because the sun rises up from the east. Um, it's the beginning, the Genesis, Bereshit, light bursting out of darkness. Um, it points at the narrow path, the way that I talk about in my book, the narrow ancient path, the called out ones. It points at what is clean and what is righteous, at what is pure. Now, take a look at this slide of the word yam. Yam consists of just two letters. Uh, yod, which is a hand. What man does. And mem, again, we're looking at water being cleansed by the word or the Father's word and what he has cleansed in conjunction with what man does with that. Um, yam is uh, usually uh, translated into English as uh, west, the west, and as seas, multitudes. Uh, where uh, Kadam is the Father's ways, Yam is a matter of man establishing his own ways. Uh, where Kadam is the East, the rising sun, light bursting forth out of darkness. Yam is the West, where light is descending and falling down into darkness. Um, it's a matter where uh, Kadam is going back to the Father's ways, the beginning. Uh, Yam is a matter of a man wandering away from the Father, from Elohim, from the beginning. Uh, has to do with multitudes, the wide path that leads to destruction. Uh, where Kadam points at what's clean and righteous, Yam points at what is unclean and what is mixed. The Father hates things that are mixed. He, uh, you'll see that time and time again when he talks about um, uh, clothing. He says, you know, don't don't mix, you know, linen with other. Uh, materials. You're, it should just be one, uh, one um, material. It should just be linen. Don't mix the linen with other things like cotton. The Father doesn't like mixed things. I talked about that in uh, the other video where um, uh, you get into genetic tampering that is being done with our food today. Not, not a good thing. Um, Let's take a look at uh, Matthew and uh, chapter 2. 
right off the top with verses 1 and 2. And we read, uh, Yeshua, having been born in Bethlehem of Yahuda, Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herodes, the sovereign sea, Magi, from the east, came to Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. The, the Magi came from the east. They came, you know, when you're reading the word and you see these, these terms, think of these root things that I'm, I'm pointing out to you. The Magi came from Kadam. The Magi came from the Father's uh, ways. They came from the beginning. Uh, and they were saying, Where is he who has been born sovereign of the Yahudim? For we saw his star in the east, Kadam, and have come to do reverence to him. You know, you're going to see that um, things that have to do with Kadam, uh, the east, uh, in the beginning, morning, meaning like early morning of the day, will always point to good things, whereas uh, the west, nighttime, uh, multitudes, seas, darkness, it usually has to do with uh, things that have been uh, corrupt. Uh, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 2, we see uh, a messenger, an angel, ascending from the east, from the Father's ways, from the beginning. Uh, let's take a look at Micah. That's Micha. And uh, we want to look at chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you who are little among the clans of Yahudah, out of you shall come forth to me the one to become ruler in Israel, and his comings forth are of old, from everlasting. Where you see from of old, the original Aramaic Hebrew there is Michadem, or Mikadem. That's Kadam. Uh, Mi means from, and uh, Kadem, or Kadam, is the east. Uh, ancient ways, the Father's ways, the beginning, the original ways. Uh, and of course, um, the one is capitalized to become a ruler in Israel, that's talking about Yeshua. And his comings forth are Kadam, from everlasting, uh, from the east, uh, from the Father, from the beginning, um, not mixed with other beliefs, uh, not corrupted, but pure and righteous. That's Yeshua. Yeshayahu, Isaiah, chapter 43, uh, verse 5. Do not fear, for I am with you. I shall bring your seed from the east and gather you from the west. I shall bring your seed from Kadam. Your seed. There's only two seeds, remember? Uh, again, pointing at my video, Having the Mind of Yeshua. If you haven't watched that one, maybe go watch that and then come back and watch this one because uh, they are tied together in a lot of ways. But um, I shall bring your seed, Kadam, uh, from the east, or Michadem, uh, from the ancient paths, from the Father's way. And gather you from Yam, from the west. Yam, gather you from the multitudes, from the, the seas, from the world, and all the things that have been distorted of the Father's ways in the world. Um, I hope you're seeing how uh, when you're reading the word and you see things like east and west, night and day, light and darkness, um, 
that there's another way of looking at what's being said in the word, in the word. Like, you know, don't fear for I'm with you. I shall bring your seed from the east and gather you from the west. What, what does that mean? Well, with this understanding of Kadam, the east, and Yam, the west, uh, you can see a whole lot more that's being said here, yes? I shall bring your seed. What seed? There's only two seeds in the world. It's either the good seed from the woman, the seed of Yahshua, or it's the bad seed, the seed of Satan. Um, and of course, he's talking about, I shall bring your seed, the good seed, because the Father is gathering those who are his, and gather you from the West, out of the world, and the confusion, and the darkness, and the mess that's been made of his message, of his seed, of his fruit. Now, in this case, too, the word West here is the word Arav. You can take a look at this slide. Arav comes from the three Aramaic Hebrew letters, um, Ain, Resh, and Beit. Ain has to do with your spiritual sight. Uh, the word. And the outside letter is Beit. It has to do with your house. You, your house. Uh, and the heart of the word is Resh, your head. What goes on in your head? Or who is your headship? Um... So, uh, your, your spiritual sight and your house, your well-being, or lack of it, um, is based on what goes on in your head, who your headship is. And uh, in this case, it's, um, it's in the negative sense that the headship is uh, of the bad seed, and the spiritual sight is a mess, and the house is dirty. Uh, Arav uh, is uh, the root word for Arabia, Arabia, Arabs. Uh, it means to mix, to penetrate with foreign matter. Uh, oftentimes, Arav is the original Aramaic Hebrew word for English words like evening, raven, plains, Arabia, swarms of flies. Um, again, you know, it means to mix or to penetrate with foreign matter, and, and you know, Yahweh hates things that are mixed. Look at Revelation chapter 3. He says, I would rather you were hot or cold, because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. What's lukewarm? That's mixed, hot and cold mixed together. He doesn't like that. He would rather you were hot on fire for him and his word, or ice cold, you don't care about him at all. He would rather one way or the other uh, because he doesn't like things that are mixed. To be lukewarm, you know, uh, you're into his word, but you also like being a Buddhist. My, my last video, can I be a Buddhist and a Christian too? No. Uh, that's being hot and cold, that's being lukewarm, you're mixing uh, stuff. If you look at uh, Jeremiah, chapter 25, verse 24, you'll see the word uh, Arabia, Arabia, and you'll also see the word mingled. In the original Aramaic Hebrew, both of those words are Arav. Uh, for Arabia, the original Aramaic Hebrew is Arav. And the word for mingled in the English, the original Aramaic Hebrew is Arav. So you can see um, that it has to do with both. Now that's not to say that those who are uh, of the Arab uh, bloodlines are, uh, are something bad. Because uh, if, if you're an Arab, uh, or if you're from one of the bloodlines of the Arabia, and you're a believer in Yeshua, you've been cleansed. Uh, so, you know, let's not get that mixed up. But you can see uh, this word Arav uh, in Genesis 8-7, it's used for the word raven there. The uh, raven was set out uh, from the ark 
and he doesn't come back, he just wanders around. Very much like Cain did, who slew Abel. Um, the second bird sent out from the ark was the dove, who did return, and with an olive leaf, the dove has fruit from its uh, works. Um, we can see that, you know, Ishmael was born of man's seed. Isaac, Yitzchak, was born of the father's seed, the good seed. Just like Cain, Cain who slew Abel. Cain was uh, of, of man's seed, and Abel was of the good seed. And again with Esau and Yaakov, Esau and Jacob. Esau, or Esau was uh, of man's seed, Yaakov was of the good seed. And another side note for you is to consider, um, are you spending your time looking for Elohim? I have news for you. <laughs> he, you're not looking for him so much as he is looking for you. The Father searches the earth to and fro, looking for those who have a heart for him. B'nai Elohim, those who are going to be the children of Elohim, those who are going to be B'nai Elohim, um, those who, what they will be, has not yet been revealed, 1 John 3, 2. Um, the Father is searching for you. The Father is looking for you more than you ever look for Him. He's looking for you. He wants to know if you have a heart for Him. Devarim, Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 27. It says, The Elohim of old is a refuge. Um... In other versions, you might see the eternal Elohim. Uh, but here in the Hallelujah Scriptures, the Elohim of old, of old, there in the original Aramaic Hebrew is Kadam. The uh, Elohim of the ancient, original beginning. The Father's ways as they began. Um... This is what I'm trying to uh, bring out in, in these recent videos of mine. Um, the idea that um, the Father, it's not so much that He knows the end from the beginning, but that He reveals the end out of the beginning. If you want to know what the end is, we have to get to the beginning. Um, we have to go to the ancient ways. We have to go to the Father's ways to know the way. If you haven't read my book, please get a copy. At the end of this video, there'll be a, a link that you can click on and it'll take you where you can buy my book in a paperback or um, as an e-book and pretty soon as an audio book. Uh, but in there, I talk about the way. I mean, the title of the book is Road to Paradise, How to Find the Way. And if you, um, if you aren't sure what I'm talking about there, you have to understand that um, when Yeshua uh, commissioned those to go and, and preach the good news, uh, they, they never called it Christianity. That word was not in existence. They called it the way. What way? the narrow path that leads to the Father, as opposed to the wide path that leads to destruction, the way. Uh, Joshua 23, uh, verse 4, that um, says, See, I have divided you by lot, these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes from the Jordan, the Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off as far as the great sea westward. Look what's being said again. The nations that the Father has cut off, 
the great sea, Yam, in the west, uh, in this case it's uh, Mabo HaShemesh, which means the going down of the sun, the west, the sun goes down in the west, the light falling into darkness. So, um, you know, again, when you're reading the word, you see the great sea, uh-oh, Yam, away from the Father's ways, uh, westward, uh-oh, Yam, or in this case, uh, Mabo HaShemesh, which, you know, means the, the going down of the sun, the light falling into darkness, same thing as Yam, um, and what's being talked about? The nations that the Father has cut off. Matith Yahu, Matthew, chapter 13, um, verses 1 and 2. On, on that day, Yeshua went out of the house and sat by the sea, Yam. Um, he went out of the house. What house? The house of, of Yahuwah. Uh, the house of the east, the house of Kadam. He went out of the house and sat by the sea. And large crowds, multitudes, were gathered together to him so that he went into a boat and sat down and all the crowd stood on the beach. You see, he went out of the house, away from Kadam, the Father's ways, uh, and where? By the sea, the multitudes. Um, again, I just want to point out to you when you're reading the word, pay attention to these root ideas. In the book of Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 16, See, I am sending for many fishermen, declares Yahweh, and they shall fish them. He says, um, I'm sending, or I will send. The original Aramaic Hebrew there is shalach, uh, or shalachim. That uh, in the original, uh, I explained in, you know, three videos back, having the mind of Yeshua, uh, shalach is a shoot off of the plant. Um, shalachim would be plural, shoots off of the plant. A shoot bears fruit. And what's in the fruit? Seeds. What seeds? The seed of that plant. There's only two seeds in the world, good seed or bad seed. So, um, uh, Yahweh, the Father, is declaring that he is sending uh, many fishermen uh, he's sending, there is shalach, uh, in other words, apostles. Um, you know, like I said, people think, oh, there's no apostles in the Old Testament, right? No. In the First Covenant, there's more apostles than there are in the Renewed Covenant. It's just that um, you don't see the word apostle because um, unless you're looking at um, the English uh, translated from the Aramaic and not from the Greek, um, the word there is shalach. But what? Um, fishermen, and they shall fish them. What's the bit about fishing? <laughs> it's the word yam, the seas. Fishing uh, in the multitudes where everyone has gone into the west, into the multitudes, into the mixing, away from the beginning, away from the Father's ways. Uh, in the waters, yam, west, away from the beginning, uh, pulling them back. Where to? Kadam, the east, back to the beginning, back to the Father's ways. Remembering that Lashon HaKodesh Kadam, the Father's language, as it was originally. Uh, as you see when I, when I show you these letters, um, they're very basic. They have to do with seeds and plants, and shoots, fruit, uh, trees, uh, waters, uh, you know, uh, skies, clouds, uh, uh, hearts, heads, eyes, ears, 
uh, the mouth, all these basic. It's so easy to understand. There's nothing com complicated here. It's all very uh, basic. Um, if you want to understand the Father's Word better, learn to think in more simple ways. Look at Mark chapter 5, uh, verse 13. And he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. There were about 2,000. And the herd rushed down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. What are we looking at here? Unclean spirits entering into pigs, going into the sea and drowning. Unclean spirits entering into pigs. Pigs are unclean things. Like begets like. There's only two seeds, the good seed or the bad seed. Unclean spirits, bad seed. Pigs, bad seed. They go together. Where? Into the sea. The multitudes. Um, and they were drowned. Um, do you see how you could read that verse in, uh, in, a, in a new light? Understanding that Unclean spirits go into unclean things, pigs. And uh, into what? The sea. We read in Revelation, uh, there will be no more sea. So I'm just saying, um, you know, learn to watch for these root ideas when you're in the Word. And to think in more basic terms. The Father's Word is not complicated. Man complicates it by trying to make it to be something that it isn't. But the Father's Word is very simple, very basic, and His language is, boy, it's more basic and simple than anything. When you see nighttime, evening, uh, usually followed by unclean things, uh, we see the West, you know, it's man wandering away from Elohim. Look at Matthew chapter 14, uh, verse 15. And when evening came, his Talmudim came to him saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Move ahead to uh, verses 23 and 24. And having dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening had come, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, agitated by the waves, for the wind was against it. You see, evening, darkness, negative things going on. Uh, when you see morning, you'll see positive things going on. The east, where the sun rises, light comes up and shines on the darkness, good things, the Father's ways. Uh, the west, where the sun sets, the light is falling into darkness, away from the Father's ways. Um, once again, my friends, I hope that this, uh, this video has been a beracha to you. Uh, I hope it helps you to find the way. Shalom, my friends. Son of man is. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But I pose the question today now who do you say he is?